Hello YouTube. Hi everyone. I'm so grateful for another week uh, and the opportunity to come before you again while things are just happening and moving all around the world. Just so many uh, issues and situations that we're hearing about. You may be even having your own issues and uh, chaos to deal with. But I'm so glad that we serve a God that can handle anything, that nothing surprises him, everything that is happening around the world, everything that you're dealing with. Uh, God saw it coming. He knew. He already planned for it. He already made a way of escape for you to come out of it. Uh, so it did not come to stay, as they say, it came to pass. So we're grateful for that. I just want to encourage you to always uh, keep singing. Just keep praising God. Keep worshiping him, no matter what it is that you're going through. Whether you're in a good place or a bad place, you're angry, you're sad, you're depressed, you're happy, you're joyful, you're ecstatic. It does not matter. Stay in the presence of God and continue to sing songs of goodness. Continue to worship God. Uh, you may be in the middle of a bad situation and everything around you is chaotic. Everybody is getting on your nerves. Everything that, every place that you go, there just seems to be confusion. Confusion on your job, confusion at church, confusion in the store uh, or in school. It just doesn't matter. It just seems like it's just always confusion. I want to encourage you to keep singing, keep praising God. Keep lifting up God's name. If you're angry, don't stay away from the presence of God. If you've messed up, don't stay away from the presence of God. Just keep before him. You know why? Because God can handle it. There is nothing that you're uh, feeling, nothing that you're facing that Jesus did not face or go through. And the Bible tells us that he is easily touched by the feelings of our infirmities. And so when we're going through things, we feel like don't nobody understand. No one gets who you are. Well, I'm here to tell you, the people around you may not understand. The people that uh, your family members may not get it, but God does. He gets it and he already knows about it. And so just go tell them, you know, just keep telling them, God, I'm angry. You know, even if you're angry with him, tell them, tell them, say, God, I'm angry with you. You will not be the first person on this planet that told God that you were angry with them. And God can handle it. All throughout the book of Psalms, uh, there were uh, writers and worshipers who experienced the same emotions. Uh, they were right. God, I'm angry with you. Or oh, God, I'm angry with your people. Uh, God, I'm angry with myself. And, uh, you know, it's not long. It will not take long as you are in the presence of God that there is a, an exchange that begins to happen. That God will take away your anger and give you his joy. Or he'll take away your frustration and give you peace. And so you can uh, see that as the writers kept talking and they would say things, that before they got to that last period, uh, they would just, something took place. You know, something supernatural happened. And they began to recognize the goodness of God. The more time you spend in God's presence, the more you will recognize the goodness of God, that God is just good. So you will go from complaining or frustrating, being frustrated, 
uh, and to just say, God, I thank you. You know, things may not be how I want it to be. Everything is not perfect, but I just want to thank you for blessing me. I want to thank you for the things that I do have. And so it takes that time in his presence for our perspectives to change, for our focus to change on uh, what God has done. And so, you know, that's just the power of God at work every time that happens. So keep singing. Keep singing those hymns. Keep singing those worship songs. Keep singing those um, Christian gospel songs. Keep singing the, the black gospel songs or however the genres are defined. Just keep singing. And I guarantee you that God will move in the midst of your situation. So you, it won't take long. You will not be in it long if you just go ahead and keep praising God. Just be honest and worship him in spirit and in truth. The world is so dark and gloom. That's why I preach. Spread the word to every man's world. People gotta pick the Savior's call. Yeah, mercy. Dear Lord, have mercy. In my life, you've been far too kind. Let me be the one to heal everyone that's blind. Let me serve you with my voice and everything that's mine. Lord, I've been Omega. You are the beginning and the end of my love. All powerful, all powerful God. Everything you do is a wonder to me, Lord. Yeah. Alpha and Omega, you are the beginning and the end of my love. All powerful, all powerful God, everything you do is a wonder, wonder. Lord, I give you all the worship, yeah. I give you all the praise. Nobody else my worship, yeah, yeah. Nobody else my praise, Lord. Your power is divine, nothing can ever match it. I throw my hands up in the air because you deserve my worship. You give me all of you, so it's not for you. What a mighty God we serve. I am so excited. As you just seen, I've released um, a new song. Uh, He's Worthy, the remix. I did it in, uh, or I recorded it live in 2000 and have just uh, redid it with a whole new fresh sound. Uh, the song includes a rapper. And so, you know, just praising God for how he connected me. Uh, with this young man that lives in Nigeria, you know, so I, you know, technology is awesome. Uh, we can communicate and do projects together, never even having met each other. Uh, God is such a good God, and we certainly do it all to his glory and to his honor. And uh, so you guys, uh, when the music is out, it'll be on all major platform soon. Download it. Help a sister out. I guarantee you will enjoy it. Definitely your children will. It's up-tempo. It's go-go. So let your kids hear it. Let let your grandkids hear it or whoever you are uh, in case it's uh, a, a style that's outside of your uh, liking. Let them hear it and just enjoy it. Uh, the lyrics are uh, positive and uh, you know they'll be blessed. So we thank God for that. We're going to just get right into praying through the tabernacle. And today we are entering into the Holy of Holies. There's this worship song that we have sung for years where it says, Take me past the outer court, you know, into the holy place past the brazen altar. God, I want to see your face. Take me past the crowds of people and even the priests who will sing their praise. God, I hunger and I thirst for your righteousness. Uh, you know, are you thirsting for God? Lord, that it, it has only found one place. Uh, my hunger and my thirst. And so the song says, Take me in to the holy of holies. 
Take me in by the blood of the Lamb. Take me in to the Holy of Holies. Take a cold, cleanse my lips, here I am. So we just bless God. We come as ourselves. We come just as we are. God, take a cold, cleanse my lips. Here I am. The prophet recognized that there was something about him that was undone. He said that in the year uh, that Uzziah died, I saw the Lord. And he was high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. And he said, you know something about seeing God that makes us realize just how frail we are, just how much we're not like him. And he said, woe is me. I am a man. This is Isaiah. He said, woe is me. I am a man that is undone and a man of unclean lips. He recognized, God, I have not always said things that honored you. I have said things against you, against myself, against other people. And God, take a cold. Cleanse my lips, God. Help me to talk right. Help me to say those things, you know, that it will flow up out of me. Those things that are lovely, just, pure. Things that are a good report you know, where I'm speaking and honoring you. Uh, because we have to all give an account for our words, everything that we've said. Uh, so that is just an awesome way uh, to worship God and to keep those songs before him. So as we enter into this holy place, we know that uh, the old covenant, under the old covenant, uh, the tabernacle, God gave the instructions to Moses. And so entering into the holy place, we, we've talked about being in the outer court, which included the brazen altar and the brazen laver. Uh, then we've gone into the holy place where we talked about the candles, the golden candlesticks, the table of showbread, and the altar of incense. So right past the altar of incense was this heavy curtain and on it was embroidered a cherubim and it stood between the holy place and the holiest of all. And so no man could enter into this place except once a year in the Old uh, Testament and so just as the cherubims were placed uh, after God told Adam and Eve that they had to leave the garden, he put two cherubims with swords to guard uh, the garden of uh, Eden so that they could not return. And so symbolically, uh, the cherubim was embroidered with that same mindset that not everybody could enter in. Only the priests were allowed to go in once a year to make atonement. He would bring the blood of goats and bullocks as he was instructed to do. And uh, he would ask God for forgiveness for himself and on behalf of the people. He would lay that blood on the mercy seat, making atonement for himself and for the people. But praise be unto our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. His body was torn on that cross. The veil in the temple was ripped from top to bottom by God himself. It was God who ripped that veil, giving us access to him. Before then, uh, men could not go before God without sacrificing the animals to get their blood for themselves. But Jesus, 
did that when he placed his blood on that mercy seat god accepted it and he was now pleased and ready to commune with man and paul wrote in romans 5 1 now we have peace with god he forever opened the way to the throne of grace by accepting that blood of jesus christ and I tell you, that ought to just make us want to run and shout because that's the good news of the gospel, that we have access uh, to go into uh, that throne room uh, by ourselves. And we know that it is all because of the blood of Jesus being placed on that mercy seat. And we are told in scriptures that that blood is still speaking and it is speaking on our behalf. It is saying, Lord, forgive him. Lord, forgive her. Lord, strengthen her. Lord, heal him. God, help him with his family. Help him with his children. God, help him to succeed in that business. Whatever it is, that blood is speaking. Have mercy on them, oh God. Lord, help them to come out of uh, those areas of darkness. That blood is speaking. So no matter what the enemy is saying to you, no matter who is accusing you or what they are accusing you of, they may have told you that you were dumb, that you were stupid, that you would never amount to anything. You don't have to worry about that. Don't answer to that. Always know that the blood of Jesus is speaking for you around that throne room of God. And let me tell you something, that's all that matters. All that matters is what God is saying about you and what he is thinking of you. And I can tell you that he is thinking well of you, that he is for you and he's causing you to rise up and giving you a seat, not because you're deserving of it, but because Jesus purchased it for you. And you can go and sit in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. Take your seat at that table. And no matter, it, it, no one can deny you access. No one can tell you that you're not welcome. No one can say to you that your invitation has been canceled. It is not in their power to do so. But Jesus has made a way for all of us to come and sit and partake of the goodness of God. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, if I could run around this house, I would do just that. So we are just so grateful. Matthew 27, 51 says, Then Jesus shouted out again and released his spirit. This is Jesus when he was on the cross. And uh, verse 51 says, At that moment, the curtain in the sanctuary of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook, rocks split apart. Come on, it got dark on the earth. But that thing was accomplished. Uh, what God set out to do even before the foundations of the world when Adam and Eve took of that fruit and brought on sin uh, unto all of humanity, on at that moment, at that time, it was taken care of uh, when Jesus shouted again and released his spirit. My God, glory to God. And so he offered once and for all his blood upon the mercy seat he obtained eternal redemption for all mankind, bringing his redemptive work to completion. My God, everything that he set out to do, uh, you know, since the beginning, it was finished. It was completed. And the scripture says with his own blood, not the blood of goats and calves, Whatever was taking place in that outer court at that brazen altar, 
did not need that anymore. Not one of us need to sacrifice uh, goats and bullocks. Not one of us need to enter into that. We don't have to give our own blood. But he entered the most holy place once for all time and secured our redemption win forever forever and ever and ever and ever hallelujah it that thing is done so you know it would just be crazy for us not to enter in you know it would just be crazy for us not to do that so jesus blood stretched all the way from the cross uh that sacrifice to the atonement uh, and that mercy seat in the Holy of Holies. And so the cherubim that barred them from entering in had to go away because now they could come in. We know that in Genesis 3.24, the scripture says, after singing them out, the Lord God stationed mighty cherubim to the east of the Garden of Eden, and he placed the flaming sword that flashed back and forth to guide the way to the tree of life. Guess what? That was done away with. That was removed because Jesus became our tree of life. He became life everlasting. Uh, he purchased it for us and gave it to us. So now there are no cherubims that are needed to stand, to guard the way into that holy place. We can come in 24-7. And uh, so we just glorify God that Jesus is now uh, forever giving us access into that he is the way. And I know that there are other religions that argue that. We can't worry about that. All we can worry, uh, worry about is just knowing that truth and receiving that as uh, for ourselves. That Jesus is the way that we come through him. He is our access to God. And so uh, you need to believe that what with your whole heart. You need to believe that with your whole heart, that Jesus is the way and that he gives you access to come before God with whatever it is that you're facing. You need to teach your children that, your grandchildren, teach your community, Teach the young women, teach the old women that Jesus is the way. Hebrews 10 and 20 says, By his death, Jesus opened a new and life-giving way through the curtain into the most holy place. Amen. Oh my God. Take me in to the holy of holies. Take me into that place and take me in by the blood of the Lamb. Glory to God. Hebrews 10, 19, right before, says, Therefore, brethren, having boldness to enter the holiest by the blood of Jesus. Come on, dear brothers and sisters, we are to be bold. I mean, come boldly, come like you know, I'm supposed to be here uh, because Jesus has given me this gift that I did not deserve and I'm not going to sit on the outside because I messed up. I'm not going to stay away because I did something horrible in my 20s. I'm not going to stay away because people don't like me. I'm not going to stay away because people have abused me or they tell me that I'm no good. No, I am going to enter in that place boldly. And I can't help it if you don't like it. That's not for me to try to fix. You know, if you don't like it, you're going to have to go before God with that concern yourself because I'm entering in and I need him and the blood of Jesus 
has opened the way. This is a new life-giving way, and I need that life. You need that life, too. So come on, let's all just go on in and let God do the rest. Amen. And so verse uh, Hebrews 4, uh, verse 16 says, So let us come boldly to the throne of our gracious God. There we will receive his mercy and we will find grace to help us when we need it most. That you will find the help that you need at the right time when you need it the most. God said, I will be right there. So it says, come on, let's go boldly before his throne of grace. Uh, and so you're going to receive mercy. And let me tell you, we all need the mercy of God. So uh, nothing, nothing can separate us from the love of God. Nothing can separate us from entering into this holy place. And so the ark contained a pot of manna uh, that was also there. Uh, inside of the ark, the ark had a lid on top of it. And when you lifted up the lid, you found a pot of manna, which speaks of God's sustaining and nourishing presence and provision for every area of our lives. Thank God that he is our provider. Whatever it is that we need, his name literally means Jehovah Rapha, which uh, means that he will see to it and he will provide glory to God. And so uh, it also reminds us of God's greatest provision for man's salvation. What we, that's what we really needed. <laughs> it was on time help. And so uh, the true bread, which came down from heaven, Jesus Christ, God has provided that for us. Uh, so in the mercy seat was also the rod of Aaron that budded, which uh, speaks of new life and faithfulness or is equal to the new creation, that we are now new creatures, uh, a new creation in Christ Jesus. All things have passed away, the old way that things were done, you know, not uh, needing to uh, sacrifice the um, animals and, and to receive their blood. But so now we are just new creations. All things have passed away and now we have this new way of approaching God. And so uh, Aaron's bud also speaks to uh, God as being the lawgiver, the governor of the nations, he is in control and all things are possible by him. God now calls us to walk by a higher law. Amen. One which is written by his spirit upon our heart. The ark of uh, the tablets were also there in the ark. The tablets were also there in the ark. Those 10 uh, commandments. Uh, we're there, but now God is calling us to walk by a higher law. He has written those laws upon our heart. And Jeremiah 31, verse 31 says, The day is coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the people of Israel and Judah. This covenant would not be like the one I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand and brought them out of the land of Egypt. They broke that covenant, though I love them as a husband loves his wife, says the Lord. But this is a new covenant I, that I will make with the people of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my instructions deep within them and I will write them on their hearts. I will be their God and they will be my people and they will not need to teach their neighbors nor will they need to teach their relatives saying you should know the Lord for everyone from the least to the greatest will know me already says the Lord and I will forgive their wickedness and I will never again remember their sins. Woo. 
<laughs> you know, listen, we, we just need to stay in the word because that would just correct a whole lot of negative thinking for us. And so this is Jeremiah prophesying uh, the days and times in which we live. These things have already done. We are already walking in that new covenant. We are uh, have been accepted into it. We're not Jewish no more, but because they wouldn't come, God used the Apostle Paul to go out and minister uh, to the Gentiles. And so if you're not Jewish and you're of another nationality, but you've accepted Jesus Christ, that, praise God, that includes us too. We are spiritual Israelites, according to scripture, and all of this applies to us. He has written his laws upon our hearts. Every man, it says. So every man knows God, has the opportunity to not just know him, but to get to know him more. Uh, God will make himself known to every man. Now, it's up to them whether or not they receive it, but God says, hey, don't worry about this. I'm God. I can take care of that. And he said, I will forgive their wickedness and I will never again remember their sins. So really nobody has to um, die and go to hell. No one has to because that way has been made for everybody. And then in Hebrews chapter 8, we have the New Testament version of uh, this writer quoting Jeremiah. And so he says, but this is the new covenant I will make with the people of Israel on that day, says the Lord. I will put my laws in their minds and I will write them on their hearts. I will be their God and they will be my people. And they will not need to teach their neighbors, nor will they need to teach their relatives, saying, you should know the Lord. For everyone from the least to the greatest will know me already. I and I will forgive their wickedness. I will never again remember their sins. So, you know, you have uh, the new writer, the New Testament writer, that is quoting what Jeremiah prophesied thousands of years uh, before. And he's saying, we're in it. Here it is. You know, we're in this new covenant. We have this old, we have this new way. We don't have to do things the way that they are. Uh, we don't have to worry about uh, those 10 commandments being outside because they're written in our hearts and we have it. God reminds them of it. It is in us and it leads us and it guides us. Whether we listen to it or not, it's there and it speaks. Praise God. So in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, Paul is writing about the glory of the new covenant. And he says, the old way with laws etched in stone led to death, though it began with such glory that the people of Israel could not bear to look at Moses' face, for his face shone with the glory of God, even though the brightness was already fading away. Shouldn't we expect far greater glory under the new way now that the Holy Spirit is giving life? If the old way, which breathes condemnation, was glorious, how much more glorious is the new way, which makes us right with God? In fact, the first glory was not glorious at all compared with the overwhelming glory of the new way. So if the old way, which has been replaced, was glorious, how much more glorious is the new, which remains forever? Oh my God. So it said, yeah, you know, Moses went up to the mountain, God spoke to him face to face. 
uh, and he received the commandments of God, the we know the Ten Commandments, and because his face shone so brightly, he had an encounter with God, but when he came down off that mountain, it says even though the brightness was glorious, but it was fading away. But we, under this new covenant, we have an experience with God, just like Moses had an experience with God. And we can talk to God face to face, just like Moses did. And guess what? There is no more veil. There's no more veil that needs to be between us and the glory of God. So we pick right up with verse 12. It, uh, this is so awesome. It says, since the new way gives us such confidence, we can be very bold. There's that being very bold again. We are not like Moses who put a veil over his face so the people of Israel would not see the glory, even though it was destined to fade away. But the people's minds were hardened. And to this day, Whenever the old covenant is being read, the same veil covers their minds so they cannot understand the truth. And this veil can be removed only by believing in Christ. Yes, even today, when they read Moses' writings, their hearts are covered with that veil and they do not understand. But whenever someone turns to the Lord, that veil is taken away for the Lord is the spirit and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. So all of us who have had that veil removed can see and reflect the glory of the Lord. Oh my God, I love that so much. We can see and reflect the glory of God. And the Lord, who is the Spirit, makes us more and more like Him as we are changed into His glorious image. Listen, the Word of God is so good. The Gospel is just such good news that, you know, all of us should just be walking around skipping and leaping. <laughs> I mean, just always rejoicing because of what God has done. This is, this is so much better than we deserve. Have you ever given something to your children that you know that they didn't deserve it? They know that they didn't deserve it. And I mean, just the appreciation, like, oh my God, I so did not deserve this. I mean, it is like, it is so awesome to know that we could be in hell, that we could be dead, that we could be somewhere, someplace that, I mean, in, just in total chaos and suffering, um, you know, every moment of the day, just suffering. But because of God's goodness, he has given us the opportunity to come boldly before his throne of grace and experience him so that we don't have to spend eternity in hell. Oh my God, I don't want to go there. I want to be with God. And I want, if you think that it's good just knowing this on earth, wait until uh, the hereafter. And some of you all say, oh, yeah, I can wait. <laughs> but listen, one day, you, we all going to know, we're all going to have uh, that experience, and we want to be forever around his throne, give him glory and honor uh, for the new way that has been made. And so we can be bold. Um, I, I love it how it says that only Jesus can remove that veil. You know, that even... Those who have not accepted Jesus and even uh, those who have operated under the old covenant, uh, those, those who only believe the, in the Old Testament but not the New Testament, it says that that veil is still there and that they do not understand, though they study those scriptures, 
you know, but God is causing their minds to not be able to understand the truth. Why? Because only Jesus Christ can remove the veil. But those of us who believe in Jesus Christ, it is because he has removed that veil. There is nothing that is separating us from seeing God's glory, from uh, reflecting back to God, his glory, uh, you know, and what an awesome, uh, just the love of God that he would even choose us to, after everything, to uh, reflect back to him, his glory. Wow. I mean, there is nothing that is more precious uh, than that, that his glory is uh, weighty. It literally means that. And that because it is not cheap, you know, gold is heavy uh, because gold is expensive, you know, and uh, it is not to be uh, taken lightly. There, You are not going to just throw uh, gold around or leave it somewhere because you understand its value. And it's not just its value, but its value to your life. And so it is the same thing with the glory of God, that we understand the value, how expensive it was for Jesus to accomplish for us what he accomplished. What he did on that cross was valuable. It cost him his life. It cost him every ounce of blood in his body. When they whipped him and that blood, his flesh was torn, it cost him everything. All of his blood has been placed upon the mercy seat. And I tell you, we could come in and just talk with God. No more veil. <laughs> I think this is what I'm going to call this. If I didn't tell you what the name of this uh, teaching is, I'm calling it No More Veil. Amen. The Holy of Holies. No more veil. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I appreciate that because I was searching for a name to title this. There it is. So James 2 and 8 says that we have been given the royal law of the new covenant. Uh, you know, out of all those laws that was written under the new covenant says, hey, Look here, these are the ones that is the one law that is most needful. And James 2 and 8 says, yes, indeed, it is good when you obey the royal law as found in the scriptures. Love your neighbor as yourself. And, you know, the, 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 in another place it says, love the Lord God with all your heart and love your neighbor as yourself. That is the one law that we uh, need to uh, definitely keep, keep and to uh, before us, devote our lives to keeping it. Uh, and because in uh, Matthew, it says that all of the other laws hangs on this one law. So if we're keeping this one law, guess what? We can keep all the others. We can uh, keep, thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not cover thy neighbor's wife. You know, these things. Uh, we can keep these, uh, all these other laws when we keep that royal law. We call it the royal law of love. Amen. So the mercy seat on the ark is now covered with the blood of Jesus. We receive mercy and grace to help in time of need at this throne of God's grace. We also plead on behalf of others, asking for mercy on their behalf. You know, we come before God in prayer, but we don't just come on our behalf because we uh, have those that we know about their situations and maybe they can't come before God. Maybe they don't know that they can enter in boldly. So we begin to intercede, literally stand in the gap the same way that Jesus stands in the, gaps, uh, in, in the gap for us and is praying for us daily 
we can do the same thing. We can imitate him in that kinds of prayer. So we want to place definite prayer requests as we enter into that holy place. Look, since you have that opportunity to go in, talk to God, you know, about your life, uh, you know, and be definite. God, I need you to heal my body. Be definite, be, uh, be specific. God, I need for you to heal my mother. Or oh, Lord, God, my children. Or I need God for this business to succeed. Uh, and let me tell you something. The good news is, is that it pleases God to give to us the kingdom of God. You know, where if we broke, we don't have to be broke anymore. If we sick, we don't have to be sick anymore. The scripture says, no good thing will I withhold from you. God is talking to us. He says, I'm not going to withhold this from you. And he has a grant to us uh, uh, access by using the name of Jesus. We went through all of that in the um, when we were talking about the holy place. You know, that anything you ask in my name, the scripture says, I will give it to you freely in accordance with his will. So we pray according to the will of God. Like we're not asking for things that's outside of his will. Like you don't want to cover what someone else has, you know, like someone's wife and say, God, well, I want her. You know, no, that's not in accordance with God's will. But God will give you your own wife. <laughs> and he would not with all that from you or your own husband. So we just allow the spirit of grace, uh, supplication. That's when you're coming before God on your behalf. And intercession, when you're coming before God on behalf of, of others. We want to pray for our nation. Pray for your nation. You, you know, we, we're going through some things. Uh, we're going, we're still in the midst of COVID-19. We all should be praying around uh, that mercy seat, calling upon the mercy of God on behalf of this nation and other nations around the world. So while we're there, we want to pray for our families, pray for our church, pray for our loved ones. Allow the Spirit of God to lead uh, us and to counsel us and uh, give us plans, show us the plans of the Father, uh, that we are praying for his will to be done on earth as it is in heaven, that we're uh, connected to that, we're in sync with that, that God give us this day our daily bread and forgive us of our trespasses as we Forgive those who have trespassed against us. And we'll pray, God, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We're declaring that God's will is going to be done on earth. Regardless of what is happening, no matter how men are acting, no matter of the principalities and powers of rulers of darkness, God's will is going to be done right here on earth. And we are in pursuit of that thing. We are relentless because of the anointing of Jesus Christ that is on us and can no devil in hell stop the anointing of Jesus Christ. And so we're not going to allow the enemy to, uh, to take us away, to pull us away, to cause us to run away from the presence of God. We might have to run away from some people. As a matter of fact, it might be good to get away from some people, but not the presence of God, not understanding what Jesus has accomplished. So you want to use uh, the Lord's Prayer as a model for you and, and uh, just every time that you come in, but that you are seeking God. 1 John uh, chapter 5, verses 14 and 15 says, Now this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we have asked of him. Oh my God, isn't that awesome? So, you know, sometimes... Um, when I have 
ever ministered on prayer, what I have understood after all of these years is that most people don't pray because their prayer lives are boring. And it's not God is not boring. You know, what is uh, boring is that we don't know enough. We don't understand enough. But if we did, man, we would come ready. Uh, because we know, he says, if you ask anything according to my will, I'm going to do it. You know, and uh, it is important that we are experiencing answers to our prayers. Oh my God, I just can't say that enough. It, it does not bring God glory if we are not getting answers, if we're not receiving from him, you know, what he has promised. It, it brings, it testifies of his goodness. It shows his power and his greatness when we receive it. And then we testify, hey, my daughter was dying of cancer. I went to uh, the throne room of grace. I came there boldly, pray for her, and God healed her. And now she is free. She is living her life. She's married now. She has her own children. Come on, that we're beginning to glorify God. Uh, so it is important that we don't give up when we are praying for something. And even though you don't see the answer, come on, don't let go. Stay there in, uh, in the presence of God and be relentless in pursuit of what God has promised. You know, Daniel prayed and uh, he asked God to deliver the children of Israel out of the hands of Nebuchadnezzar. They were in captivity and had been uh, God told him, you're going to be in captivity for 70 years. And when those, that time was up, Daniel started praying, God, come on, you said you're going to bring us out, bring us out of this. And so we know the scripture, it says that from the moment that Daniel prayed, that God sent the answer, but it was held up by these principalities and these powers. Uh, there were even things that were going on in the natural that was holding it up. But he persevered in that prayer. He began to fast and pray. And it took 21 days. But let me tell you, that answer came. And it came through God, delivered them, sent them back to Jerusalem. That's how we know about those that went back to rebuild the walls and rebuild the temple. I tell you, come on now. We need to know that God is uh, answering prayers. He is still opening up Red Seas. He is still tearing down Jericho walls. He is still slaying Goliaths. Come on, we need to know that. And so if your prayer life is boring, it's boring because you just don't know enough. And you got to come on and meditate on this word and understand what it says and believe it. Amen. John uh, 16, 23 and 24. It says, and in that day you will ask me nothing. This is Jesus speaking. He says, most assuredly I say to you, Whatever you ask the Father in my name, he will give you. Until now, you have asked nothing in my name. Ask and you will receive that your joy may be full. So not only does uh, us receiving answers bring glory and honor to God, but it brings joy to us. God wants us to be full of joy. He wants us to be walking around and say, hey, sis, you know, did God answer your prayer? Yes. Did God answer your prayer? Yes. You know, we're just excited. You know, we're full of the joy of the Lord and we're testifying one to another about that joy, about those answer prayers, about God being faithful, about God being good. That is what uh, we are to be experiencing and as a result of, of coming boldly before that throne of grace and the new way that Jesus has made for us. And so Matthew 21, 22 says, and whatever things you ask in prayer, believing you will receive it. So we receive it. 
You know, it says, ask in prayer, believe it, and receive it. Hallelujah. You know, and then we, it goes on to say, you know, you want to make sure if we got any art in our heart, if we got any unforgiveness in our hearts, release it. Let it go. Don't let that keep you from getting the answers or hindering your prayers from receiving the answers. Unforgiveness and art and those things, those uh, uh, will definitely, you know why? Because we're violating that royal law of love. And so we don't want to do that. And I know that it's not easy. It's something that we have to work on. It's not easy for me. People have certainly done things to me. I may have done things to others, you know, and that, you know, so we have to work these things out, man. It's our faith walk. But don't let that stop you. We can't let that stop us. We have to keep pressing and pushing and asking God, the Spirit of the Lord, for the help that we need. Help me to overcome it. Help me to let go of the pain. Help me to let go of the hurt. Help me to forgive, God. I know that you can do that in me and through me because I want answers to my prayers. I want the joy of the Lord. Amen. I want God's name to be exalted in this earth for his kingdom to come and for his will to be done. And so Mark eleven twenty four in the Amplified says, for this reason, I am telling you, whatever you ask in prayer, believe, trust, and be confident that it is granted to you and you will get it. So amen, amen. Do not fear, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom, it says in Luke 12, 32. Philippians 4 and 6 and 7, this is a very familiar passage. It says, be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be known, made known to God and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Jesus Christ. So we will not only have joy, but we will have peace. It's going to guard our minds. Uh, it's called a, 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 a piece of our armor, our helmet of salvation. You know, it just guards our minds. It keeps our minds uh, protected. You know, our, our that peace uh, helping us to stay, um, you know, steady before God. Stay steadfast uh, before God. And so it is not based upon uh, anything in the natural realm. Things can actually be going crazy. But if we have the peace of God on the inside, it don't matter. Be like, I don't care that they said that. I don't care that this is happening. I don't care that, uh, you know, it seems like it's turned upside down, but I have the peace of God about it. So I know that his kingdom is going to come and that his will will be done where that situation is concerned. So we don't have to be anxious. You know, if you're walking in any uh, anxiousness in your life, I'm telling you the reason why. You have not come boldly before that throne of grace and began to talk to God. You have total access. Uh, and it doesn't matter what it is that you've done. It doesn't matter how you feel about it. Just go in there and do it. You know, just do it. Do it afraid, as our sister Joyce Myers said. Uh, so do not be deceived, my beloved brother. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and comes down from the Father of lights and where there is no variation of shadow of turning. So every good and perfect gift comes from God. So if we're going to get it, we, we have to go before him and ask for it. We have to ask for it in prayer. You know, uh, and it says, and when you pray, you shall not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the corners of the streets that they may be seen by men. Assuredly, I say to you, they have their reward. But when, but you, when you pray, 
go into your room and when you have shut your door, pray to your father who is in the secret place and your father who sees in secret will reward you openly. There's a secret place for all of us. That prayer room, uh, that closet, if you will, gone into it wherever you pray in your house, just turn it into a, a, a closet for you. You know, uh, I remember the testimony of the mother uh, who was taking care of her uh, children. And I think this was John Hagee's wife. And so she didn't have time you know, getting the kids ready or off the school, you know, she would just throw the apron over her head and pray while she was serving the kids. You know, you could turn anything into a prayer closet. You just want to pray and just stay before God. And God is going to show you that he heard you by rewarding you openly with your request. And so when you pray, don't use vain repetitions, it says. Don't be like the hypocrites, you know, for they think that they will be heard by their many words. It's not about that. You know, it's not about being able to say the right thing or, you know, coming up, just speak from your heart. Uh, whatever it is, there is no protocol. You know, just talk like you would to anybody else. So thank God for that. Be who you are and come just as you are. You can be messed up. You can be a drug addict. You can be an alcoholic. You can be a prostitute. You can be a wife beater. You can be a child molester. You can be a murderer. Come on now, we just need to get real about this. I don't care who you are. You know, sure, the, the men think that these things are despicable. And some may even tell you that God will never forgive you for it. Not true, not true, not true. I'm here to tell you, you have access because Jesus has made a way for everybody. And that certainly includes you. So go ahead and forgive yourself. Go on in there and talk to God and be relentless about it. I don't care who you are or what you've done. I don't care how long you've been doing it. Go ahead and talk to God. Go ahead, allow him to show himself strong in your life. Give him a chance. Give him the opportunity. And he will show you that, he, that he's hurt you. And that he will reward you openly. That everybody will know that God heard your prayer and that he answered you. The mercy seat, the blood of Jesus is on that mercy seat. And it is not based upon you. It is based upon that blood that Jesus, so you can say, thank God for the blood or that I plead the blood over myself. I appropriate the blood of Jesus to my life and the situations that I'm dealing with. So the mercy seat is speaking on our behalf. He will speak to us. Uh, he will give to us visions, dreams, answers to our prayers. And this is the place of receiving from God at that mercy seat. Here at that mercy seat, we are changed from glory to glory and from faith to faith. Let's uh, never leave the presence of God. We don't have uh, to leave. We can be full and fulfilled knowing that he is pleased with us and that his love, his power, and grace is now flowing from us to others. My God, my God. <laughs> When you come out of your prayer closet, you should come out of there completely full and fulfilled. My God, my God. Knowing that you are pleasing God and that you are pleasing to God. Oh my God, you are pleasing to God. He delights when you come and talk to him. He loves it 
when we all come. He, he's loving this time right now. I just sense his joy and his presence. And, you know, he's right here with us and he's rejoicing with us. And he's in it. He has, uh, he is enabling us uh, to just be filled with his presence to the full, to the overflow, and to have his power and his grace that is now flowing from me to you. Amen. So you're going to go tell somebody else, and then it's going to flow from you to them. So praise God. We're just uh, excited. Our expectations should always be of him. Always, because he's given to us a new life. He's given us a new law of love. He's given to us his provision. Not only that, we get to fellowship with the Father and we can intercede for others. This is what having access into the holy place means, that we can have all of these things uh, operating uh, in us. We come boldly to the holy place of holies by the blood of Jesus and we draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith that what God has promised he is also able to perform it glory to God I hope that you have enjoyed this entire series um, go back and listen to the brazen altar listen to the brazen a labor. Listen to the Trinity and the Holy Place, and then you definitely want to give it to us. Share it with others. And so I thank you for joining me. I'm praying that God bless you, that the blessings of the Lord will overtake you. I may literally chase you down <laughs> and surprise you with things that you didn't even ask for. That God would just bless you simply because he loves you. Again, thank you so much. And I'll see you next time.